Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you how you can very easily and quickly deploy your .NET application, whether that's an API or a console app, to Kubernetes. Now this video is a bit of a measuring device for me because I want to see how much of interest this is to you. Kubernetes in general is a great tool and it's a great tool to know how to use as a software engineer because like I've said in the past, software engineers who understand DevOps tooling and can use it to a huge degree are very, very valuable. So if you want to take your career to the next level, this is definitely things you should know. Now, if you're interested in more in-depth videos like this, please let me know down below and I'll take that feedback and maybe make a series about that. In the meantime, this video will assume that maybe you know about Kubernetes or you've used kubectl before, you maybe have used a managed Kubernetes service or maybe played around locally and you know how things hang together. I won't go too in-depth in Kubernetes itself, but rather focus on the deployment. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. Now, before I move on, I want to let you know that I just launched my From Zero to Hero Dependency Injection in .NET course. In that course, I take you from the very basics of dependency injection to the fundamentals. We do a deep dive into the DI framework itself. We see how we can use some pretty advanced patterns and approaches with the built-in DI framework, then see how we can extend it even further to add other behaviors. And then to top it all off, we build a dependency injection framework from scratch. This is by far the most complete dependency injection course you will find out there. Trust me, I checked all of them and will teach you everything you need from the very basics to some pretty, pretty advanced stuff. And it all comes from real world experience building huge scale microservices. Now, the first 100 of you who want to buy this course can use this code right here to get 15% off. So check it in the description, buy it if you want, and thank you very much for supporting the channel. So I have nothing here currently. And what I want to do is I want to create a new project and I'm going to create a new web API. So I'm going to create a Kubernetes example API. And all this really has is the weather application that we get out of the box. So your typical give me five weathers really. Now, this is the project, the API I want to deploy to Kubernetes. And actually, I already have a Kubernetes cluster set up. I'm using AKS or Azure Kubernetes Service, and I've provisioned that using Terraform. I described my cluster, I described my setup actually, and this is what it looks like. It makes it very manageable for me to provision and then destroy letters so I don't pay after the video. Again, if you want to know more about Terraform in the context of a .NET engineer or maybe Azure, please let me know. I'm more than happy to make those videos. So now that we have the AKS cluster, let's deploy this API. And the one thing you should know about Kubernetes, especially the way things run, is they run through pods that are wrappers around images of containers. In our case, it's going to be Docker images, but it doesn't have to be Docker images. Now, Drider makes it very easy to add Docker support. All I do is I select add Docker support, and then I select my target OS and will make a Docker file for me. But I don't want it to be in that location over here. I wanna take those two files, the Docker ignore and the Docker file, and take them a step upwards. And the great thing about Kubernetes is that deployments are, are effectively the process of you telling Kubernetes that there is an image pushed in some registry that can be Docker Hub, ideally private, if things should be private, or the registry offering in the cloud provider you're using, maybe ECR, which is the AWS one, or ACR, which is the Azure one. We're gonna use Docker Hub because it's free and I'm cheap. So what I wanna do now is I wanna build this Docker image so I can push it to ACR. So I'm gonna go to the terminal and I'm gonna say Docker build and I'm gonna tag it. So I'm gonna say Nick Chapses forward slash weather API and I'm gonna give it a version tag as well. And then I'll say that the working directory is the current location, which is basically where we move the files at. And I'm gonna do that, and this will now build the Docker image. It's building it locally and it exists in my local machine. And what I need to do is now push it to Docker Hub. And I am already logged in on my CLI with Docker login, so I don't need to do it again. The reason why we're doing this is because in Kubernetes, instead of zipping up your application, like the artifact, and then just uploading a zip somewhere, all you need to do is just build an image, a Docker image, and then push it to the repository. And then you tell, Kubernetes, hey, there's a Docker image there, or an image in general, go pick it up and run it. And that's all you need to do, and that's why deployments are great. So your continuous integration pipeline or CI pipeline would involve your code being built, 
tested and in the end you push that image to the registry so now with that what i can do is i can say docker push and again i am authenticated here to be able to do that nick chap says for slash weather api and i'm going to select the version as well so 1.0.0 that's it now i can do that and wait as this is pushing the image as you can see it's being uploaded now so let's wait a bit so the image is now pushed let's take a look at it in docker hub here we go let me just refresh it it should be here here it is nick champs says weather api and now all we need to do is tell kubernetes hey there's an image there deploy it pick it up and, and deploy it but how do we do that well in the terminal let me just show you i've already configured kube ctl or kube cuttle or whatever you want to pronounce it like against that AKS cluster, which now has no pods, as you can see, no resources found in that namespace or services or anything. And what I need to do is I need to define my deployment. A deployment is an object in Kubernetes and it defines how your app should be deployed, including replica sets, matching conditions, a bunch of other stuff, and even the image itself. So to do that, I'm going to go here and create a new file. And actually, Rider has Kubernetes support, but I'm not going to use it. I'm just going to use kubectl. And by the way, if you're lost and you haven't played with Kubernetes before, the moment you set it up, you'll be able to do this. So if you follow any setup tutorial, you'll be able to do what you're seeing here. However, I'm going to link down below what I used to set up the AKS version, the, the Azure service. And you can use that to get exactly to the point where I am in the beginning of the video. So all I need to say is deploy dot yaml yes this is using yaml i don't like it either but it is what it is and then i'm not gonna type this i'm gonna paste it and then talk you through this but this is basically our deployment so the kind is deployment and then we have some metadata and then we have our replica set here so we specify that we want to run three instances of this weather api and we're doing this for redundancy and high availability if one of them goes down kubernetes will just create a new one where it can so we have high availability and then we have a match labels, which is important because this deployment then will match the app label that matches the weather API word here. So this is important. And then we specify the pod itself. So the name is weather API for the pod. We specify the image, which is the thing we just uploaded. We want to have the image pool policy as always, because if we don't have that, someone can basically manipulate what's cached in Kubernetes in the node and maybe upload malicious code. So you want to have that always here. And then the port we want to expose through the pod, which is 80 because the Docker image we wrote exposes 80. And really that's it. If I want to deploy this, I mean, for starters, I could just do it from Rider, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go back to the terminal and I'm going to CD into that folder here. And I'm going to say kubectl apply f and i'm gonna point to the deploy yaml and if i do that it does that sometimes it worked so it created the deployment so now if i do kubectl get pods you can see that i have three pods of the weather api up and running just like that in fact here's the portal this is where things are running i'm gonna go to workloads default namespace and you can see the weather api deployment here Three of them ready, up and running. And if I refresh, all of them are here. Great. Now, the problem is I can't really access that. And if I go here and do kubectl get SVC or services, you see that I have no service with an external IP, something I can actually hit. So what I want to do here is I'm going to create a new service behind the load balancer so I can get an external IP that I can call and maybe if you want more videos, I'm going to explain how the load balancer plays into all this and allowing your applications to scale very nicely in Kubernetes. The way to do that is to create a new file again. So I'm going to say service.yaml here. And again, I'm going to paste. I don't want to make it boring. So let me just talk you through this. Again, some metadata, the weather API is the name of the service here, the label, and then you have the selector, which is important. And then the target port is, in fact, right there if you hover tells you what it is, it pulls it from the documentation of Kubernetes. It is the port that the pod is exposing because you're not going to hit the pod directly. It goes through the service, the nodes, and then the pod. And then this is a port that will be exposed by the service itself, the thing we're going to be calling. So with that here, I'm going to go back and I'm going to do another uh, F 
and this will be service.yaml and it does that like I said and again I did that and if I do get pods now all three are running and then get services I'm pending on an external IP because it has to provision that so it might take a while for me so let's give it we give it a minute to provision this so we now have an external IP and if I take that and go to the actual browser and paste it here and say forward slash weather forecast as you can see the application is now running in Kubernetes and I can see that here I can go to workloads I can see the pods running the ones we care about are here in this default namespace the things that we are touching and if I go to replica sets I have my weather API replica set which is three out of three and again the beauty of Kubernetes and if I want to kill it just to see how the recovery stage will kick in I can say kubectl delete pod and then the name and it says pod deleted so if I do cube I'm not fast enough ctl get pods I now have three out of three running but one of them was just started seven seconds ago because one of them died so it's that fast that good then if you want to deploy to the next version it's as simple as changing the version of the image obviously this one doesn't exist so if I try it it will fail but all of this should be in version control these files this declarative approach with Kubernetes and you should have something ideally else running it you shouldn't be doing this through a command line but now you know how the tech behind it works well that's all I have for you for this video thank you very much for watching special thanks to my patreons for making this videos possible if you want to support me as well you can find the link in the description down below leave a like if you like this video subscribe for more content like this and the bell as well and I'll see you in the next video Keep coding.